My name is Tom and Gabriel Warrior of uh, Hellhammer Celtic Frost and Trypticon and Triumph of Death. My name is Mia Winter Wallace from Triumph of Death, Nerit and Abbott. And you're watching Metal Shop TV. Ooh! Guys, Tom, Mia from Triumph of Death. Um, how are you enjoying this lovely place? I guess it's a very fitting place for your music. Absolutely. It's, it's rotten, it's cold, and there's mold. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's my third time here, and I, I, in all honesty, it's, it's one of my favorite festivals. I've always had a fantastic audience here, and it's a sensational location. It's a pleasure to be here again. Okay, so speaking of this place, tonight, Triumph of, the Triumph of Death, playing the Hellhammer set. So the obvious question is for you, Tom, uh, how does it feel to revisit that old days, that old music? It's, it's a very mixed feeling. On, on the, to begin with, uh, this band has a really uh, strong sense of friendship. It's a pleasure to play with these people. It's a very special band. I'm enjoying very much playing with them. Um, the music carries a, a lot of memories for me. Um, a lot of it is extremely important to me and has a lot of meaning, changed my entire life. Yeah. But at the same time, it also reminds me that Hellhammer is, is long past, it's the past since 35 years, and that even though we are very true to the original songs, you can never recreate Hellhammer. And yeah. so there's a part of me that's also sad because it reminds me of a very magical time in my life with uh, Steve Warrior when we formed Hellhammer. And we were totally underground. Everything was totally real. Nothing was commercially. It was just us. And I kind of missed this a little bit. But yeah. I think as far as playing him, playing these songs in 2019, with this band, these people that I have around me, it's probably the best possible version, as far as I can imagine. So looking back to those days, there were no like aspirations to, yeah, we're gonna be big. We're gonna make something like a that everyone's gonna remember. Well, of course we had some lofty dreams, but you have to understand, I mean, you're, you're asking me this now, 2019, where, where there's been an extreme metal scene for, I don't know, 13 years. Back then there was no extreme metal scene, and, and Hellhammer was one of a, a small handful of bands to play this music. There was maybe Motorhead, Discharge, and Venom. Yeah. Uh, Bathory hadn't yet been formed, so we, you know, there, we played something that nobody accepted. People laughed at us, people made us outcasts, and, and we were realistic enough to think that in spite of our dreams, this music never go anywhere. At most, we could maybe be uh, accepted in the punk scene or something. So we didn't really, we didn't play music to become famous. We, we played it because it was a scream inside of us, because yeah. of the circumstances of our youth. Uh, we all had a very difficult youth, all of us, and, and this was just our little world that we created ourselves to keep away teachers, politicians, parents, and so on. It wasn't about being in a stadium, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, the fun fact is that uh, when that first bunch of music uh, was released, there were a couple of uh, harsh reviews. For Very some, much so, yeah. From some magazines. Why do you think that happened? Was that such a shock for them? Yeah, probably. But I mean, they were also, they were right. With, with for the ears of the time back then, uh, what was in back then was things like ACDC or, or bands with vocals like Ronnie James Dio. Mm -hmm. That was the standard of the day and, and we were the complete opposite. Yeah. And for the years of back then, what we did was just noise. A best punkish, punkish noise. Yeah. And so uh, these were used, they, they hurt, but they were in a way justified. And of course now we have different years, we have been used to the black metal scene and, and yeah. all kinds of things. It's, it's more normal now. Well, uh, for how long did you have uh, an idea for this, uh, for this project to, to bring this music back to life? The, the very earliest roots for this idea uh, happened when we reformed Celtic Frost. Yeah. And Martin and I spent uncounted nights talking about our past and, and reminiscing and analyzing our, our history. Then it became more intense when I, when I wrote my second book, Only Death is Real, which is about Hellhammer. I started really thinking about maybe one day playing this again. And, and the concrete plan for Trump's death 
uh, it happened around 2012, 2013. That's when okay. I started talking to people about maybe doing this one day. Uh, and the final gestation is when, when I started working with Mia uh, in the Nerith project. Yeah. And sometime during 2018, I, I, I told her about this in, in a discussion we had. I told her about the Trump death thing. And she was she was completely excited about it, and, and she really gave me the push to actually do it. And she started working also very hard on helping me transcribing the songs, having ideas how we could do this. So the the the, the final uh, the final initiator was was uh, Mia. Yeah. So Mia, was it for, for you? Was it like an instant yes, <laughs> or or were you like instant yes? I've got to think about this. Uh, when when he. Uh, he said to me about this this idea. I was trying not to jump and not to dance uh, uh, everywhere because for me, I mean, I uh, I molded my my musician uh, career, if I can, can say career, on Lammers music. Yeah. And for me, Tom and his music, uh, they are, they have always been a bad example. Legends. <laughs> Legends, and I, I personally think uh, that mm, the music that that Tom created is basically the basis for all all, all the music we are yeah. listening tonight. It's yeah. timeless. Yeah. So yes, I was trying not to to jump and dance everywhere. I was, of course. <laughs> like yeah. maybe, but inside you were like yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Cool. And is it this triumph of death? Is this like a project just for this year or this summer, or do you want to like uh, continue with this to spread like this message of Hellhammer? No, we we never we never um, thought of an end. We 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 basically said we're going to play this for as long as people would like yeah. to hear this. And now that we formed this bond within the band, the four of us, we really enjoy playing with each other. This it's a very good atmosphere in the band. Yeah. And even more so, do we would we like to continue this project? Uh, of course, we don't want to play to death, but I think I think as long as people will have us, we we will happily play this. And it's really open end, and maybe we'll do some other things in the future with this band. Oh, we've been thinking about various ideas what we could do with this band because okay. it's so much fun. So we'll see. Absolutely, and that's one of the most important thing I learned that if you play music and you enjoy this with your bandmates, it's the most uh, beautiful thing you can do in your life. Yeah. So you can easily see also on stage that we are all friends, we, 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 we make jokes, we, we look at each other, we really have fun on stage. Mm -hmm. And a different thing is when you, you have to deal with uh, two, two difficult personalities yeah. and yeah. there are tension, every egos. E too, ma too much, I mean, and in this case, everything is really harmonic. Har harmonic. Yeah, we are all friends. Okay. Yeah. And speaking of you two, uh, you have a new project called Nirif, if I'm correct. Um, when can we expect something, some new album, um, singles, anything? Actually, right before uh, playing Partisan yesterday at this festival, the day yeah. before, we, we were in Dortmund talking to uh, several record companies. Okay. Very uh, concretely about the doing the Nerith project, we finally presented the music and the, the photos and everything. And uh, the plan is to, to release a first EP later this year or early next year. Oh. And follow it with an album still in the same year. The reactions from the record companies were fantastic. We were very happy that, that uh, what, we, what yeah. we developed translated yeah. so well. Yeah. So uh, I think um, it's now very close that we can finally release something. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah. we're definitely looking forward to that. And it's uh, like a free bass project, if I'm correct? It's, it's, uh, it's two, bassists, two bassists and a drummer, but in the studio we use up to yeah. eight, eight basses. Eight basses, yes. And a lot of e experimental sounds, but without losing the bass sound. Yeah. So respecting all, always the, the sound of the bass. Okay. But it's very we we, we ask it a lot to our bases when, when we record it. Well, and it sounds pretty experimental, and not, and I like it. It's it's experimental maybe in in the techniques we're using, but the music doesn't sound experimental. It's it's actually melodic, dark. Yeah. yeah. 
okay. uh, very moody, groovy, psychedelic, uh, all kinds of things mixed. It's very difficult to put a style on it. Okay. Music is not experimentally difficult to listen to. No. It's the experimental is the approach. The I approach. Think it's the opposite. It's not easy. It's not uh, difficult to no. to listen. No. On the contrary, no. it's very. Yeah. Very easy listening. Yeah. Melodic. Okay. Yeah. So looking forward to it. And now a question for you, Tom. Um, I've got to ask it. The status of the new Triptychon record? Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, uh, finally Triptychon is showing signs of life. And I admit it's all my fault because I've been in, involved with so many things and also had to take care of some private things in my life okay. in recent years. Uh, we have finished mixing the Requiem, the live recording of, of the Celtic Frost Trypticon Requiem. We yeah. finished mixing yeah. it. Uh, I have submitted all the artwork. Uh, it's it's going to be released uh, early next year as a very, very lavish gatefold album with, with many extras and bonus material and so on. It's okay. going to be a really beautiful release. But of course, that's just a, a, a stopgap release. The actual next Trypticon uh, studio album, we are working on it. I'm working on, on various songs. And we will rehearse those songs later this year okay. in Switzerland. And uh, we plan on, on also recording this album uh, in the next few months, in early 2020. Okay. And uh, release it hopefully later next year, if, if all goes well. So there should be two Triptychon albums finally within maybe one year. Okay, so that's a piece of pretty exclusive information. Thank you for that. And um, the last question. Um, I know that the term legend is used a lot but you are, for me, a true legend of the metal. So I want to ask you, uh, what is your current look on the uh, metal scene? Do you have some maybe younger bands that you like, or are you like... Because I interview a lot of metal music musicians, and uh, a lot of times they tell me that, it, that they don't even listen to metal music anymore. Well, what I is your approach? I don't listen to a lot of metal music. Uh, I do listen to a lot of outside music because I'm playing metal music every day for, yeah. for 38 years. Okay. And I also need some, some time when I'm not involved with that. And I listen to a lot of prog, rock, folk, classical jazz, all kinds of things, uh, ambient uh, and wave. But I do, of course, listen to metal. And, and I think in, in any time period you find fantastic musicians, all, including now, what, what I have a problem with, maybe, is, is that the computer technology has taken a lot of life out of the recording process of mm -hmm. metal. To me, metal needs to be raw, it needs to be real. Metal was always the music that was live versus pop music, hip-hop music, where it's, everything is designed in studio, everything's computerized. I loved metal always because it was actual music, performed yeah. by actual people. And nowadays, we, we plug a guitar directly into the computer. There's no air in between. You don't hear the air between the amp and the microphone. Uh, we edit the drums to death. We edit the guitar, so everything's perfect. And of course, musically speaking, it's, it's amazing, but we're losing the spark of our music. We're losing what made our music magical. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I have an issue with modern metal, it's not the musicians or the bands, it's the, the process approach. behind it. I really would like the, a lot of uh, new, young musicians to take the time to actually record a drum with microphones or to record a guitar via an amp. Yeah. Because you can hear the difference. Yes, and it's essential. It's, it's difficult, it, it costs more money, mm -hmm. it takes more time. Yeah. But good things always take more effort. You know, I mean, these albums will stand past our life. They will yeah. stand for hundreds of years. So you shouldn't save money or time, you should think ahead. These will be our, 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 our calling cards for decades, centuries to come. So why save? You know. But that's just my personal little opinion that doesn't really matter, you know? Uh, yeah, but it's, there is definitely something about that. So guys, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Tom. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, Triumph of Death. Um, Check out Hellhammer songs when you haven't um, the chance and see you soon. Rock on guys.